Welcome to the shortwave radio channel and of course uh, we're going to talk a little bit about propagation, changing propagation with time. We often uh, have videos talking about it uh, and it is interesting to follow this and understand it a little bit. You know, we don't have to be experts to really understand it, but knowing a little bit about uh, solar activity, geomagnetic activity and the effects on shortwave is uh, kind of useful and, you know, depending on the season. So we are today, August 31st, and there's a minor geomagnetic storm actually going on. And this is because of uh, solar wind. It actually uh, created some minor geomagnetic storming. So we had minor uh, geomagnetic storm um, a few days ago. And today, of course, we have another one of these uh, storms. So this is, of course, degrading propagation of radio signals. Uh, so it's nice to follow this information because uh, usually, you know, when you have the K index, like here, if we look at the chart, K index at five or more, you know, when the bars get yellow or red, um, you can expect that maybe shortwave propagation might not be as good. Sometimes it's not as good for certain regions, but will improve on other regions. Um, personally, I've often found that when geomagnetic uh, storming occurs, the east-west signals might not be very good or the ones that cross the poles. But north-south signals um, sometimes are enhanced and even better. So it's worth still tuning around and checking out the effect. But if your favorite station is weaker than normal, this could be the case. And it's something also to note that we are approaching the equinox, um, you know, September uh, 21st, 22nd of September will be the a start of fall in the northern hemisphere or spring in the southern hemisphere that time period september october and uh, march and april tend to be more the earth magnetic field tend to be more sensitive to geomagnetic storming it takes it doesn't take necessarily that big of a wind gust from the sun from the solar wind to actually make geomagnetic storming so we might see this a little more in the next few weeks. But uh, understanding that, you know, um, seeing these numbers is helpful in understanding. And, you know, checking out the K-index. K-index is an indication of our geomagnetic field. You want to have the K-index as low as possible. So when the bars are green and really short, it's much better than when they are yellow or red. So these are uh, things that you need to observe. And... Um, probably one of the important aspects of radio propagation um, conditions and of course as the days get shorter in the northern hemisphere you will notice a change in the nighttime propagation um, the mighty kbc next week is to go down in frequency to 5960 and there's a reason for that the longer nights mean that the higher frequencies might not be as good so they move down in frequency to make sure that propagation works well. Uh, and this is something, and this is why we changed the shortwave schedules. Now we're still a long way off. Shortwave schedules are at the end of October that they're going to change. But uh, still, there is a change and a definite a shift in the propagation conditions um, with season also. So as we're moving and the day's getting shorter in the, the northern hemisphere, it really, really impacts a lot. Of course, the uh, other way around in the southern hemisphere, you know, people in Australia, New Zealand, and so on, or even South America, will notice uh, that propagation is going to be uh, changing also, but they are heading towards, you know, summer. So they're going to slowly have the equinox and then summer conditions coming up. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. And the link to solarham.net will be in the description below the video in case you want to check it out yourself and see what are the conditions uh, in solar activity and the geomagnetic field.